It is a spectacle among spectacles. A giant among racetracks. Here, the greatest run against the greatest. In a heart-stopping moment, a man lives. In a heart-stopping moment, a car dies. All part of one of the great auto races in the world, the Daytona 500. In the starting field of 40 are cars capable of more than 180 miles an hour. None is slower than 167. To drive these incredible stock cars are some of the best drivers in the world. Buddy Baker, six feet five, and every inch a racer. Baker drives Dodge number 11, set up by Petty Enterprises. His teammate, Richard Petty, drives famous number 43 Plymouth. A.J. Foyt, three-time Indianapolis 500 winner, fastest qualifier at 182 miles an hour. Bobby Isaac, NASCAR national champion who qualified second fastest to Foyt. Pete Hamilton, Plymouth number six, the defending champion of the Daytona 500. His car, set up by mechanic Cotton Owens. It's time to race. Isaac into his car on the front row. The doors are welded shut for safety. Foyt's into his car on the pole inside front row. Leroy Yarbrough, winner of the Daytona 500 in 1969. Cale Yarborough, winner in 1968. Richard Petty, winner in 1964 and 66, the man to beat. His toughest opponent will probably be A.J. Foyt or Pete Hamilton. Gentlemen, start your engines. Bill France, president of the Daytona International Speedway, speaks those time-honored words. Forty engines come to life. The sound of 20,000 horsepower booms across the speedway's 450 acres. This is the first big race of the year. Under new rules, most of the cars are forced to use carburetor restrictor plates, which reduce speeds by reducing the air reaching the carburetor. A year ago, Cale Yarborough qualified at 194 miles an hour. The best speed this year was only 182 miles an hour. In stock car racing, there are many incredible phrases like only 182 miles an hour. Practice has shown that there are at least a dozen cars capable of running in front. They're completing a warm-up lap. And when they come past the grandstand, they'll be looking for the green flag, 500 miles of racing, and a total purse of more than $200,000. The pace car moves off the track. A.J. Foyt and Bobby Isaac pace the field, waiting for the green. The flashing yellow and red beneath the scorer's stand holds them back. It's green. They're racing. Bobby Isaac's number 71 Dodge jumps to the lead. Into the first turn. Climbing the 31 degree bank, running three abreast at better than 170 miles an hour. A.J. Foyt's number 21 Ford eases past Isaac and riding Foyt's draft, Richard Petty's number 43 Plymouth. Petty stays on Foyt's bumper. Petty is two time winner of the Daytona 500. Foyt has two victories in 400 mile races on this track and is also three time winner of the Indianapolis 500. 
this may be the start of a head-to-head -head battle by two of the greatest drivers in history. They're reaching the end of the first of 200 laps on this two and a half mile track, one of the great super speedways of the world. Boyd tries to run away and break the draft that gives Petty and the others an advantage. Years ago, Richard Petty discovered that two cars running close together were faster than either car alone. He also discovered that the slower car by catching a toe from the leader, would run faster, with less strain on its engine, than it could alone. Drafting has become a highly developed art, and Richard Petty, riding Foyt's bumper, is a master at it. Foyt fails to break away from Petty, and eases off the throttle as the rest of the front runners close the gap. Diving low, David Pearson in number 17 Mercury challenges. Pearson slips into second place. Petty drops back to third, running with his teammate Buddy Baker in Dodge number 11. Pearson's taking a run at Foyt. And passes. He slides up across three lanes, almost to the guardrail. At 180 miles an hour, that must be a strange sensation in the pit of the stomach. Buddy Baker gets a toe from A.J. Foyt and slips into third place ahead of Richard Petty. Pearson shows the way. Also in the pack are Isaac, now fifth, Leroy Yarborough, and Pete Hamilton. Foyt booms back into first place. Baker tries to follow him and challenges Pearson for second. Buddy Baker in Dodge number 11 takes second and charges for the lead. takes it. This is the fifth leader in as many laps. Seven cars are running nose to tail. Straightaway speeds on the backstretch, an incredible 200 miles an hour. A car's out of control. Troyer's Ford number 60 flips an incredible number of times. The roll bar cage that protects the driver and keeps the roof up is intact. The yellow flag whips and caution lights at key points around the track signal all drivers to slow down. Seat belts and shoulder harness kept Troyer in his seat and in the car. The huge safety apparatus of the Speedway and NASCAR swings into action. There are dozens of safety vehicles stationed around the track as well as a fully equipped hospital in the infield for the care of drivers and spectators. NASCAR, the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, sanctions and controls the race. One man's disaster is another's opportunity. The front runners pit while the caution signal slows the field. Buddy Baker, Dodge number 11, is refueled and out of the pits in 12 seconds. While the cars refuel, let's see again Maynard Troyer's near disaster. Troyer's engine blew, locking the rear wheels. As he headed down off the high banks, Troyer's car dug in and began to roll with the momentum of 4,000 pounds moving at more than 150 miles an hour. As it rolled, fenders and other parts were ripped from the body and scattered on the track. Twisting through the air, it landed on its wheels and the added spring of tires and suspension made it leap into the air like a hooked sailfish. Through 18 flips, the roll cage kept the cockpit open and Troyer sustained only minor injuries in one of the most amazing crashes in racing history. The car, a total washout. On.
Buddy Baker in the lead. Four of the front runners have broken away from the pack. Baker is trailed by Pete Hamilton, defending his Daytona 500 victory of a year ago. It's hard to realize that these cars are only a few feet apart and traveling the length of a football field every second. Hamilton's Plymouth roars into the lead. Pearson tries to follow him, but Baker's dodge is too fast and holds second. James Hilton's Ford is in fourth spot. Hilton's qualifying speed was only 169 miles an hour. Hilton uses the combined power of four cars to stay with the leader. a few more RPM on the back stretch and moves past Baker and past Hamilton. Third to first in a single move. Pearson wants to break away and run alone, but can't shake the pack. Seven drivers gamble everything on each other's ability to control their cars. Hamilton takes Pearson's measure on the front stretch and goes back into the lead as they climb the banks into the first turn that looms like a wall in the afternoon sun. It's an amazing sight as six cars storm down the back stretch chasing Pete Hamilton's Plymouth. Among the leaders now, Bobby Isaac in fourth place and Richard Brooks in wing number 22, a 69 Dodge. Cale Yarborough's car is in the pits. Yarborough, a former winner, hasn't run at the head of the pack all afternoon. A top driver out of the race. Pearson's number 17 Mercury slingshots to the front with Bobby Isaac and number 71 Dodge getting a ride on his coattails. Nine cars are now running nose to tail, flat out. crew wants to know how his chassis is handled. Teddy is signaled he's running laps in 49.75 seconds, 181 miles an hour. Despite these speeds, not one car this afternoon has been able to run away and break the draft that gives the following cars a free tow. Bobby Isaac tries for the lead. Buddy Baker, running third, grabs onto his slipstream. Against this combined attack, Dave Pearson is helpless. Pearson discovers if you lift your foot for an instant, you're in fourth place. Richard Brooks in the wing Dodge number 22 is up among the leaders. Brooks' car with a 305 cubic inch engine challenges Isaac and noses in front. Brooks' engine is limited to 305 cubic inches against 429 for the others. Without this handicap, Brooks' wing car might be the fastest on the track, but Brooks can't stay in front. There's not enough horses in the 305 to plow through the wind alone. Baker and Isaac, both in new Dodges, put the wing car behind them. Bobby Allison finds running room on the inside and takes second place in number 27 Mercury. Isaac, the national champion, shows the way. Leroy Arbro's in trouble. Slowing down. The car's on fire. Leroy's out of his car and doesn't seem to be injured. A gasoline fire would be more explosive with less smoke. This flame seems to be from a broken oil line. There's a $5,000 engine under that hood. Leroy's not going to forget that. Bobby Isaac, pursued by the Furies of Foyt, Baker, Hamilton, and five more fast cars, is trying to stretch his lead. But the cars are so closely matched, and the strain of running in front so great, that the job is almost impossible.
Isaacs dropping back. Boyd retakes first place after working his way through the nine car pack. Baker, fighting for control on the high banks, keeps the pressure on Boyd. Baker has no equal when it comes to high speed tailgating. Bobby Isaac dives into a deserted pit area. An unscheduled pit stop while the others are racing under the green is a disaster for any front runner. Forget Isaac for a while. The field is already a lap ahead of him. Brooks' mini motor Dodge has slipped back into the lead. But Boyd is bearing down and passing. Brooks is out of control. Hamilton's right behind him. Great driving and great luck combined to save both drivers. At 175 miles an hour, any contact could lead to disaster. The pace car will slow the field while the track is inspected. Hamilton limps to the pits. Both cars are still running. There's Brooks number 22 Dodge. He's taking another lap, which might tell him if the chassis's been damaged and the handling affected. Hamilton's ripped the sheet metal. Any irregularity in the shape of the car will cut speed and create handling problems. Hamilton, winner of the Daytona 500 a year ago, can't move until NASCAR inspectors are convinced the car is safe. When the fender is burnt off, that car won't be aerodynamically smooth enough to run with the leaders. Using the caution laps created by the crash, Foyt and the other leaders pit. Dick Brooks in the pits. New tires replace those worn in a quarter mile long skid. And Brooks will be back in the fight. There's the green flag. Boyd puts his foot down, but Petty staying with him. There goes Petty in Plymouth number 43, taking the lead as if Boyd were standing still. Petty's teammate, Buddy Baker, gets a ride in Petty's draft and takes over second place. seems to be running on a rail. Baker tucks into Petty's draft, and both cars move away from the other front-running challengers. Donnie Allison, Bobby Allison, and Foyt now in position five. The miles roll away as the leaders fight for position, and the pit crews wait for their final important moment. 100 miles to go, and the front-runners are low on fuel. There hasn't been a caution signal, and none of the leaders wants to pit, while the competition is running full bore. Foyt leads by a car length. But as they come off the second turn, Foyt slows down. Petty streaks back into the lead. Foyt is coasting, his engine sputtering, his gas tank dry. The momentum of 180 mile an hour speeds will carry him into the pits. Petty dies for the pits on instruction from his crew. The fabulous Petty teamwork is a vital part of winning. Also in the pits for fuel, Dave Pearson's Mercury. Pearson has dropped a lap behind the leaders. Petty's Plymouth is able to run farther on limited fuel than either Pearson or Foyt. Here's Foyt. Half a lap ago, he had a one-second lead. Now, he reaches his pit 20 seconds after Petty. Races are won and lost by less. The Wood Brothers crew, one of the best in the business, races the clock to get Foyt back on the track. They change two outside tires and fill the 22-gallon tank. Petty's away. Foyt's engine won't start. His crew primes the carburetor. Foyt's engine fires, misses. 
Fires again. He's away 22 seconds behind Petty. There's a yellow light. Something's wrong on the track. Pete Hamilton's blown his engine. The pace car gets between Petty and Foyt. This will allow Petty to gain almost a full lap. There's a green flag. Petty and Baker streak away, fighting for the lead. Foyt's in the pack just behind the front runners, but he's a full lap behind the leaders. Foyt must pass Baker and Petty twice in order to win this race. On the backstretch, Buddy Baker's Dodge number 11 closes in and takes the lead away from his teammate, Richard Petty in Plymouth number 43. Foyt in Mercury number 21 is only a few car lengths back, but still one full lap behind. Both Baker and Petty are signaled yes by their crews. Will they race each other and risk an accident? Or are they being told to stick to a pre-race plan? The pit crews won't say. It's a two-car race in the final laps, and both belong to the Petty team. Is there any wonder there's tension in the Petty pit crew? The white flag. One more lap. Richard Petty, 497 and a half miles from the start, is still running smooth and fast. The car performing perfectly after 199 laps around one of the fastest tracks in the world. Petty holds his position, keeping Foyt in sight. This race will go down in the record books as the most competitive ever run. There were 48 lead changes, and at one time or another, 10 different men we're in first place. And there's a checkered flag. Richard Petty wins his third Daytona 500, his 120th stock car victory. 11 seconds behind his teammate, Buddy Baker takes second place. The Petty racing team has beaten everyone, winning more than $61,000 in prize money. And there's the checker for A.J. Foyt in third place. Petty eases his Plymouth into the pits, on his way to victory lane. Petty has earned almost $1 million behind the wheel. In addition, his fellow drivers have voted him most popular driver on the NASCAR Grand National Circuit. Richard Petty's almost too good to be true. More than half a century ago, auto racing first proved that the American automobile was fast and safe. Today, men like Richard Petty, driving 500 miles at speeds of up to 183 miles an hour, continue to prove the quality and dependability of the American automobile.